What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. Who's the last guy? Oh, Antonio Gibson was the last player I want to talk about. Um, I know he's different than all the rest of these guys that we talked about. He's a little tier below these guys, but I think he's super interesting. He's so much fun to watch. And I missed on a guy like Tony Pollard last year. I thought well, he was too. more of a receiver who could play some running back, but definitely wasn't the backup to Zeke. And But I thought he looked really good given the opportunities that he did when Zeke was out and in the preseason. Um, and in my opinion, he's one of the handcuffs you got to own if you own Zeke. Um, and Pollard had 78 carries, 39 receptions his last season in Memphis. Gibson had 33 attempts and 38 receptions, but averaged 19.3 a reception and 11.2 a carry whilst scoring 12 touchdowns like this guy was just a threat to score every time he touched it what are, what are your thoughts on a guy like that am i am i just making up for my miss of pollard in in my love for antonio gibson right now and he's pretty cheap in dynasty still but is my love affair warranted what's your thoughts on a guy like gibson no i think it can be warranted i think the the problem for evaluators especially someone like myself is that you i'm probably always going to miss on guys like tony pollard and antonio gibson and always be a little too low on them because there's just not enough of a sample size with carries to really see the full expression of their talents. And when you're trying to, when you're trying to scout, especially the way I do, it's not for one specific team. So I have to look at the variety of skills that the running back position can have. And sometimes I'm not going to see him run zone, or I'm not going to see him in certain situations with certain types of contact balance that he's just not going to face because he didn't have his not enough carries for me to see it. Maybe he only ran a certain number of routes. So I love his talent. Like when you just talk about what he seems capable of being able to become high upside, um, love the all around skills. Lo there's some things he can do as a receiver, like run curl routes and run and make plays over the middle of the field, like a, like a slot receiver that you've got to feel really good about. Um, and then as a runner, terrific contact balance, someone with excellent speed and acceleration, someone who can catch the ball deep. I, you know, I had a, a reader of mine who's, I think he's an astute, has an astute eye for running back play. And he often comes with kind of outside the box um, comparisons. His name's Eric Mack. I think he lives in Baltimore as well. And Eric, Eric said to me, he goes, you know, Antonio Gibson reminds me of Eric Metcalf. If you remember Eric Metcalf from like the throwback Falcons and yeah. Yeah. And I said, you know, even at two 30, he's like, yeah, he's like, what is it, what is it that he can't do that Metcalf does, but with more power. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, I mean, that's an interesting comp. Um, and I don't know if I fully agree with that. Cause I remember watching Eric Metcalf a good bit, but uh, I don't think he's as light footed as that, but he is a dynamic athlete. And there's so much that he can do that the yeah. team's going to be able to get a lot out of him. And I think there's a lot of growth potential for him, for sure. For it's it's the dynasty. There's just I think there's so much top end uh, potential there that I've, he's just got me super intrigued. Is there like a landing spot that would make 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 you feel better about it? I know certain coaches are better at bringing people along and have a better eye for guys who fit right into their system. I think Shanahan's been doing a good job of that in, in San Francisco outside of Pettis, which I think that might be more on Pettis than Shanahan. It um, is. Yeah. But is, is there a system or a, a landing spot that, that would make you feel good about Gibson? Or yeah, I think so. I, you know, obviously, I mean, an easy answer is new Orleans. Um, Always. Just because yeah, they're imaginative. <laughs> exactly. Fuck big coast heartstrings. Yeah. Dome. You, you put you you put Sean Payton calling out any player that he really wants, and that's my yeah. guy. Yeah, Andy Reid obviously is an imaginative guy. He can make that work. Um, I also think that there's a possibility there. I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think they need it. But certainly the Colts would be an interesting um, uh, possibility for him because he could, he could get early playing time in a gap scheme that's pretty heavy there. That wouldn't be bad. Um, I think that, you know, those are probably the teams that make the most sense to me right off the bat. Um, teams that sound like it would be a good idea, but I don't know if they could implement it. The Rams just seems like every year they, they talk about wanting to have a guy like that. Washington seems like they talk about having a guy like that. Doesn't really happen. Um, the Eagles, just because they already 
I could see how they would platoon maybe a little bit and they have the, the brain trust to probably do it. But you know, it's kind of like Dallas Goddard right now where you're kind of like, Stuck you know, in you see the talent, but he's stuck in purgatory. I kind of fear that that's what would happen in that scenario. Um, so those, are you, those are examples. Are you treating him like a running back? I think he had more catches last year than than attempts. I, I don't know what – like. The, I watched an interview with him, and they were asking about Tony Pollard, and he was like, well, he's more of like a running back. I, I think I think he said that he considers himself more of like a wide receiver. Does that – does that weigh in? Like, are you are you considering him a running back? What do you think he should play? What was funny before the before the uh, Senior Bowl, my main you know analysis of him that I put on my site was more from the wide receiver perspective, and I thought he'd make a better wide receiver. Then I graded him as a running back, and I thought he actually has more potential as a running back. Um, and now, of course, he sees himself as a receiver. So it's going to be fascinating <laughs> to see where that is. You just got – that's the hard part about evaluating these guys with low touch attempts is that yeah. you, you're probably doomed to be wrong in one way or the other. So sure. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to have to, like, put an advisory or talk about that maybe in the next year because as you were bringing it up, I was thinking that's probably the, the issue. Because I remember watching Tony Bollard in the senior bowl and really being impressed with how he ran the football in practice. But again, the practice – tape even when you get the practice tape and can watch it and you're not just at the practice watching it live and you're reviewing it even then there's things about practice tapes practice that, yeah you don't get a chance to really understand the nuance and the immediacy of how these guys think and process information <laughs>